One Ton Life is presented by Vattenfall, Volvo and Ahus. In this episode of One Ton Life, the family will travel to Gothenburg to learn about their carbon dioxide rucksack. To find out more, they'll visit the factories where their house and their electric car were built. But first, we'll visit the Chalmers University of Technology and meet Friedrich Kedenus, who explains the concept of the rucksack. The carbon footprint from consumer goods that the family buys are calculating by investigating the fuels, fossil fuels and electricity that the factory are using that produce the goods. And thereafter we can calculate the carbon footprint. And thereafter we allocate the carbon footprint over the period of time that the goods are used. So goods that are used for a short period of time, like clothing, we allocate for one or two years. And the car, uh, that is, we assume are used for 15 years, we allocate a carbon footprint for a period of 15 years. Whereas the house's emission are calculated over a 100 year period. The rucksack for the one ton life house in which the Lindells live accounts for 31% of their total carbon footprint. Here we can take a look at a similar house to the one they live in. It's on display in central Gothenburg, outside the Congress Center and opposite the Lissabari Amusement Park. Entering a house that looks just like her own but located somewhere else feels quite strange. I was sitting there thinking, am I at home or what? Weird. Here the Lindells meet representatives of the city of Gothenburg and the Live Your Life project and compare themselves with other climate smart families. We have passed the first half of the one ton life uh, journey. We came a long way with the footprint, carbon dioxide footprint, but we have to try even harder now because uh, it will be more challenging for us personally. So far the technique has helped us a long way and now it's mostly up to our behavior. So it's going to be a true challenge, but we're going to give a good go. The food we eat is still more than half of the carbon dioxide footprint I have. So I think that's the area where we will have to work the most. It'll be fun because tomorrow we'll also get to see how these houses are built. Everything from scratch, from raw logs all the way to finished house. So it's going to be really interesting to see just how this is done. The following day it was time to go to Aarhus in Kungsbacka to take a closer look at how the houses in the Bright Living series are made. Our house is part of the De Rome Group, which is currently supplying new houses to 600 families. The De Rome Group handles everything from forest to finished house, and that's something we've been doing ever since 1947, with a focus on wood. House construction is a relatively energy-intensive process. In order to reduce the carbon dioxide footprint of its operations, our house is investing in wind power and utilizes waste products from the De Rome Group's sawmill. This is used in the production of bioenergy, which is used to heat the premises. Here we meet the factory's Christian Axelsson, who explains. All the houses we build here at our house are made of wood, which is the most environmentally friendly building material in existence, since trees actually absorb and bind carbon dioxide while they grow. All the structural beams, all the moldings we use are produced in our own sawmill. This is a major benefit not only from the viewpoint of transport and logistics, but also with regard to quality. What is unique about the Bright Living Homes is that we have developed an extremely energy-efficient house without in any way compromising on comfort or design. The walls are about 40 centimeters thick, and when we put together everything on site, the walls and roof, we use special techniques to ensure the house is as thoroughly sealed and insulated and as energy-efficient as possible. It can be compared with a thermos flask. It's all about keeping the heat energy within the outer shell. It was really fun to see the sawmill. There is so much happening at the same time. There's the timber coming in and then it's split into many different pieces and that part goes away and becomes something and this continues and there's things happening everywhere. It was real cool, a bit like being in the world's largest woodwork class. That's Seeing it. how it all came together added yet another dimension to the whole experience. Absolutely fascinating. I have to say I think this was the most enjoyable part of the whole project so far. After our house in Kungsbacka, the Lindells continued on to Volvo Cars in Torslanda, where they got to see how cars are made. 
but first a visit to the Brand Experience Center and the Environmental Exhibition, where among much else the family received information about plug-in hybrids, a cooperative project that Volvo Cars is running jointly with Vattenfall. There was also a chance to test their eco-driving skills in the center's advanced driving simulators. Right now we're in the factory where they make the bodies of the cars and we have just uh, went in and it's going to be really exciting to see how they make the cars and build them. The Volvo Car Corporation's factory in Torslanda is one of the most environmentally optimized car production plants in the world. Thanks to its advanced purification and filtration system, this factory has the lowest emissions of hazardous substances in the entire automotive world. The energy used in car production here is climate neutral, coming from hydropower and other green sources. Energy consumption has been cut by a massive 57% over the past five years. After that, it was time for a visit to the Volvo C30 electric production plant, where 250 electric cars are being built before being sent on for thorough testing by selected customers such as power provider Göteborgs Energi. Here we are at SVS, Special Vehicles and Service. This is where we build the C30 electric. There's a whole bunch of cars that are identical to ours. Lots of our car. Now we're going to see the engine of the Volvo electric car and the battery. And it's very special since it's electric. And it's going to be exciting to really get to know the inside of the one-ton life electric car. The whole point of this vehicle is that it should have the lowest possible carbon dioxide emissions. And sure enough, this car produces absolutely no emissions whatsoever from its engine. But what about the production process? Aren't there any emissions from the actual process of manufacturing this car? We've taken a very close look at the manufacturers of each and every component that goes into this car, so as to minimize emissions from start to finish. We have demands on all our suppliers, requiring them to show that they have done everything possible to keep emissions from production to an absolute minimum. Here we have the two batteries that provide the power for the car's motor, instead of petrol or diesel. How come there are two separate batteries? That's simply because it's easier to install and also to ensure the best possible weight distribution in the car. And in addition for reasons of collision safety, this car is designed for five stars in the Euro NCAP crash tests. There's no other electric car in existence that can come anywhere near this safety level. After their visit, the Lindells returned home to Stockholm by train, a perfect and climate smart way of traveling that generates only a small eco footprint. If, in addition, we select renewable energy sources with low emissions, these products' carbon dioxide footprints can shrink considerably and the rucksack can be that much lighter. Vattenfall operates more than 100 hydropower stations and is the largest wind power producer in the Nordic region. Nils and Alicia chose hydropower for their house in episode 5 and immediately reduced their carbon dioxide emissions by 90%. I think it's great that the Lindell family in the One Ton Life House chose hydropower, which is a renewable and carbon dioxide neutral energy source. Here we are in Lilla Edet in Vattenfall's hydropower station. It became operational back in 1926, when the three generators in the old plant started up. Then in 1982, a fourth generator was added. So today there are four generators producing electricity here in Lilla Edet. In the next episode of One Ton Life, we'll be reducing emissions still further, bringing further challenges for the Lindell family's lifestyle. They'll receive guidance and tips from the Chalmers University of Technology. See you then.